today we are going to talk about oxidation and reduction. So now, you may have wonder, in your daily life, you have seen that apple turns brown, or you can see metals getting rusty, or you may have wonder about what is happening in the process of respiration and photosynthesis as well. All of these are the examples of oxidation and reduction. After you have learned through this chapter, then you can understand why does all these life examples happen. So let's take a look at the definition of oxidation and reduction. Oxidation and reduction is also known as redox reaction. Redox reactions are common and essential to some of the basic functions of life, including photosynthesis, respiration, formation of brown apple, and corrosion of rusting of metal. It's pretty obvious that you can see that RED in redox stands for reduction, while OX stands for oxidation. Oxidation reduction reaction is a type of chemical reaction that involves a transfer of electrons between two species. To simplify it, oxidation and reduction happen when an electron moves between atoms or compounds. And one more thing, both reduction and oxidation are occurring simultaneously. Look at the example here. We have atom X and atom Y. And there's electrons moving from atom X to atom Y. Therefore, this is an oxidation reduction reaction because there is electron moving between atoms. We can describe the movement of electron as redox reaction. Now, let us understand the precise definition for both oxidation and reduction. Reduction is gain of electrons. At the other side, oxidation is the loss of electrons. Now, we know that reduction is gain of electrons and oxidation is loss of electrons. Let's look back at the first example to understand what is happening between the atoms. We can see that atom X release or give an electron to atom Y. Based on the understanding of oxidation and reduction that I have said just now, atom X undergoes oxidation because it lost an electron. Atom Y received the electron from atom X so atom Y undergoes reduction. We can modify the sentence a bit to describe what is happening exactly to both atoms. For atom X, it undergoes oxidation. So we can say that atom X is oxidized. For atom Y, it undergoes reduction. So we can say that atom Y is reduced. This might be a little bit confusing for you to remember the definition of oxidation and reduction. There is a good memorizing method for you so that you won't get confused with both definition. You can remember this word ORIC where OR stands for oxidation is loss where RIC stands for reduction is gain. Right, let's back to the topic. There are many chemical reactions that involve oxidation and reduction. Let's look at one example of actual chemical reaction to understand how oxidation and reduction works. Here's a chemical reaction. Sodium, chlorine, and sodium chloride. We can see that sodium react with chlorine and form sodium chloride which is table salt. Sodium chloride is an ionic compound, which means it is made of ions. In order to form an ionic compound, which is sodium chloride, an A plus and Cl negative is needed. These two ions bond together because they have opposite charges. Now, and A and Cl do not always have charges. Before the reaction occurs, both atoms are zero charges. They are two electrically neutral atoms. 
in order to form these opposite charges and bond together to form an ionic compound which is an SCL. There's changes in the atoms of course. Let's talk about the changes in the atoms for them to have charges. Originally, both of them have no charge. After that, sodium gave an electron to chlorine. So this is where the charges come in. Sodium loses one electron and forms sodium ion, which is Na+, and chlorine receives an electron from, uh, from sodium to form chloride ion, which is Cl negative. Now, both of the ions have charges, and what is going to happen? Both ions bound and form an ionic compound. Therefore, this is how two atoms, which are both initially zero charges, to become ions and eventually form an ionic compound. Oxidation number is the total number of electrons that an atom either gains or loses in order to form a chemical bond with another atom. To simplify it, it indicates the changes of charges of an atom in a reaction. It can give you a clearer picture of what is happening in the reaction with charges and electrons. Let's look back at the chemical reaction. You can see that there are figures below every components in the reaction. There are oxidation numbers. You can see the figure below the sodium and chlorine atom are zero. It shows that these two atoms are neutrally charged. Then, at the right hand side of the reaction, each element in the compound have charges, plus one for sodium and negative one for chlorine. These oxidation numbers help us to track the changes of charges in each element in the reaction. Oxidation numbers remind us that Na and Cl started out with no charges and end up having charges after an electron is transferred from sodium to chlorine. We can also define oxidation and reduction in terms of oxidation number. What we studied from the example just now is that the oxidation number of sodium increase while oxidation number of chlorine decrease after the reaction occurs. And I mentioned earlier that sodium is oxidized while chlorine is reduced. Therefore, when the oxidation number of an element increases during a reaction, it is oxidized. When the oxidation number of an element decreases during a reaction, it is reduced. Apart from oxidation numbers and electron transfer, there are two different definition terms of oxidation and reduction that we will learn in this topic, which are in terms of oxygen and in terms of hydrogen. When an atom or compound gains oxygen during the reaction, it is oxidized. But when an atom or compound loses oxygen during the reaction, it is reduced. Let's look at another example here. There are magnesium, copper 2 oxide, magnesium oxide, and copper. In this reaction, magnesium reacts with copper 2 oxide and form magnesium oxide and copper. Copper 2 oxide loses oxygen during the reaction and form copper. Therefore, copper is reduced. In the other way, Magnesium receives oxygen from copper 2 oxide and form magnesium oxide. Therefore, it is oxidized. Now, let's talk about oxidation and reduction in terms of hydrogen. When an atom or compound loses hydrogen during the reaction, it is reduced. But, when an atom or compound gains hydrogen during the reaction, it is oxidized. Here is another chemical reaction. 
Here we have hydrogen sulfide, chlorine, sulfur, and hydrochloric acid. In this reaction, hydrogen sulfide react with chlorine to form sulfur and hydrochloric acid. Hydrogen sulfide loses hydrogen and forms sulfur in this reaction. Therefore, it is oxidized. At the other side, chlorine gains hydrogen from hydrogen sulfide and forms hydrochloric acid in this reaction. Therefore, it is reduced. Here, I'm going to introduce you two new terms in this topic, which is oxidizing agent and reducing agent. Oxidizing agent is a substance that causes another substance to oxidize. Reducing agent is a substance that causes another substance to reduce. Let's look back to the first example. Just now, we knew that sodium loses an electron to chlorine. Therefore, sodium is oxidized and chlorine is reduced. In this reaction, sodium re loses an electron to chlorine and causes chlorine to get reduced. Therefore, in this case, sodium is a reducing agent. At the other side, chlorine receives an electron from sodium and causes sodium to get oxidized. Therefore, chlorine is an oxidizing agent. Basically, you can understand it in this way. When a substance is oxidized, it is an reducing agent. When a substance is reduced, it is an oxidizing agent. If you notice, I have mentioned some of the chemical substances that contain number in it. For instance, copper 2 oxide. Why is it called copper 2 oxide instead of copper oxide? This is called IUPAC nomenclature. It is a set of rules to generate systematic names for chemical compounds. It is like a specific official naming for chemical substances. So back to copper 2 oxide. Actually, oxidation numbers have a big correlation with IUPAC nomenclature. We name the compound based on the oxidation numbers of metal in a compound. In this case, copper 2 oxide because copper has the oxidation number of plus 2. Therefore, it is called copper 2 oxide. However, not all the metals in the compounds we have to name it according to Ayurvedic nomenclature. We usually do the naming on transition metals, only which is from group 4 to group 12 because it has a big range of oxidation number. This is why we still call, call sodium chloride as sodium chloride instead of sodium 1 chloride. So, let's do a recap on the lesson today. Reduction is a process of gaining electron. Oxidation is a process of losing electron. Reduction occurs when the oxidation number of an reactant decreases. Oxidation occurs when oxidation number of an reactant increases. Reduction is the process of gaining oxygen. Reduction is the process of losing oxygen. Reduction is the process of losing hydrogen. Oxidation is the process of gaining hydrogen. Oxidizing agent is a substance that causes another substance to oxidize. Reducing agent is a substance that causes another substance to reduce. Question box below, there's a link to a simple quiz related to what you have learned today. You can try to attempt that quiz. Besides that, there's a link to some questions related to oxidation and reduction. I believe that you have mastered this topic if you can manage to answer the questions. Last, stay safe and study smart.